Good morning, everyone. My name is Taj Singh, President and CEO of Discovery Metals. Um, Discovery Metals is focused on exploration and development in Mexico, and a uh, relatively new company started effectively in September 2017. Um, and prior to that, I'd spent the past six years of, uh, of my career uh, in, in Mexico, about 30 to 50 percent of my time in the last uh, six years. Um, working with Timmins Gold, and um, when I got introduced to this project from Mark, did a site visit and saw it, and I was really excited about the prospects of what had been put together here, a past producer that had a lot of potential. So what's our aim? Is to rediscover an old mining district. The oxygen team for the better part of 2016 and 2017 spent significant amount of time doing uh, due diligence on a land package in northern Mexico in the Coahuila state, and they assembled a land package of 3,000 square kilometers over a high, historic high-grade mining district that makes them one of the largest landholders in Mexico for an explorer developer. This is situated in a world-class carbon replacement deposit belt that stretches from southeast Arizona to central Mexico, which has many prolific, economically robust um, deposits. Right now, we have a portfolio of seven designated properties. All of them have shallow, high-grade silver zinc lead mineralization, in addition, copper and gold in some situations. And they're open in all directions, and each property has multiple targets. All of the properties have been past producers, uh, in one case quite significant, but all private. They've never seen the light of day in terms of being in a public company. And because they're all past producers and there's been quite a bit of you know, significant development, that gives us an advantage as to where to start and uh, identify targets and, 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 and drill. The flagship Puerto Rico project has a 12 kilometer long mineralized zone with extensive underground workings. Historic min mining by Asarco starting approximately in the 1900 um, extracted 1 million tons of 40 percent zinc ore. That's the average grade that was primarily all sold as direct shipping ore. Coahuila State is a very mining centric, safe, secure um, uh, place to operate in Mexico, very easy to do work. There's three smelters actually in the state um, that, that, that take direct shipping ore. These projects have never been drill tested, that's the big thing. They've got past production, they follow the veins visually, uh, they follow the system, sorry, the mineralization visually, and they just kept producing, but they've never been uh, explored by modern methods and they've never been drill tested, these properties. There's hundreds of historical workings and over 4,000 meters of underground development. Um, we are getting into drilling now. We've started. I'll get into that. But from channel sample results from several weeks ago confirmed our belief um, that there's something really re very compelling here. From Puerto Rico, 32 channel samples. The average grade was 26% zinc, 9% lead, and 310 gram per ton silver. From La Quica, over 11 channel samples, similar, 22% zinc, 8% lead and 240 gram per ton silver. And these systems, they're all, they're enriched at the surface, non-sulfide, um, you know, similar to kind of oxide deposits, and at depth they continue. And, and the real prize we're looking for is the multi-million ton sulfide deposit. But the interesting thing about these is the direct shipping ore potential and the potential for near-term cash flow. If, if, you know, if, if there's a few uh, tens of thousands or a few hundred thousand tons to get us going with cash flow in a very easy way, that's something that's interesting. And it creates this, essentially a self-funded explorer developer. So Discovery has first mover status in a virtually untou untouched district scale, shallow, high-grade silver zinc lead system with what we believe is exceptional opportunities for new discoveries. Looking at the property locations, all of the properties are situated in the northern part of Coahuila State. A lot, many mining operations are uh, in, in Coahuila. You'll see our, our projects are centered on essentially on two main blocks, the north block that, ho that hosts the Puerto Rico project, and then the kind of central larger block that uh, hosts five of our other projects. And then the south, we've got, it's cut off here, but in the south, about 150 kilometers uh, south, uh, there's the Monclova project. The the projects are actually very accessible, easy to get to. Um, they are in a little bit of a remote area, so which maybe is the potential reason the, they've kind of been hidden. Um, but very accessible, significant infrastructure around, and like I said, uh, a very mining-centric state. 
So the geological model for Mexican carbon replacement deposits, this graphic here shows uh, a select few uh, deposits that are come along that belt, uh, some very significant ones. The deposits occur along a 2,000 kilometer long belt of carbonate rocks from southeast Arizona to south central Mexico. Fold and thrust architecture controls the mineralization. They're high temperature, zinc, silver, lead primarily, but also, as I mentioned, copper and gold mineralization. And the deposits form um, through replacement, following along stratigraphy, form chimneys and mantos. Mantos typically being uh, horizontal, generally horizontal structures, and chimneys, um, you know, generally vertical structures. And it's the replacement of the carbonate, in this case limestone, where the, the, the mineralization is deposited, leading to very high grade deposits. The deposits typically contain 10 to 15 million tons, but it can exceed 100 million tons. And they're very high grade, as I mentioned before. And again, we're seeing a very um, similar char characteristic in them is that they have weathering down to about 50 meters or so, forming supergene non-sulfide zinc deposits. Just wanted to touch on some recent sampling results we put out in mid-November. This is from Puerto Rico. You'll see there's 32 channel samples taken from the underground mine workings, the backs and the walls. And you'll see very consistent uh, numbers of anywhere, combined lead zinc, 25, 30, 35, 40 percent, pretty very consistently across these samples. Quite a bit of co copper and a good silver kick or two, two, three, four, five hundred grams per ton silver. Um, just at a very broad level, uh, the average in situ rock value, if you use current commodity prices, over the 32 channel samples was $1,100 a ton from these 32 channel samples, the average. Same thing with Lakika, we did this, we did 11 channel samples, again from old mine workings. Um, and again, if you, you're having kind of combined lead zinc through 20 almost every time, very strong copper as well and silver, you're having a, you know, an in situ rock value in a broad sense of about $775, close to $800 per ton. And again, all of these are less than 20 meters from surface. So going, what did we do in 2017 and then leading into what's going to happen in 2018? We completed a $14.5 million financing in the summer and announced the board, advisors, and key management hires, a very strong Mexico team. All of the key management uh, have worked, spent significant time in Mexico. The company began effectively operating in September 2017, building out the management and the Mexican exploration teams during that time. We carried out permitting work during the last quarter of the year on all seven properties. We applied for six drill permits, received five of them. The, second, the sixth one is expected in the first quarter 18, and the final one for Puerto Rico is expected the second and third quarter 18. And these are just drill permits. All of the properties can be mapped and sampled currently, and that's what's happening uh, as we speak. We carried out panel and channel sampling programs on two properties. I showed the results of that and press release those. And we started our drilling uh, of the first property, La Quica, in December 2017 and drilling is still ongoing. We aim to have about seven to 800 meters complete by the end of January 2018. And now looking to 2018, it's gonna be a very busy news a year for us, seven properties, and our goals are to surface test all seven projects sufficiently to take them to the drilling stage so that each property has first stage drill targets identified. And then we also wanna drill all of them, first stage drill test all of our properties with the ultimate goal of advancing two, three, four of them to the second stage drilling and ultimately with a view to a potential resource at, at multiple properties in 2019. That's our goal. We currently have about $12 million in the bank and the plan is to spend at least $5 million a year on this project, which will leave us in a healthy position for financial position going into 2019 as well. You'll see here is the initial concept of the deposit types. They're primarily all CRDs, but some of them have, uh, are in the transition zone between scarns, porphyries. Uh, our initial concept of whether it's open pit or underground, and then when we plan to begin surface work, geophysics, start the drilling with the approximate meterage of drilling. And you'll see throughout 2018, there's going to be work, there's going to be news coming out, surface work, geophysics, drilling. Um, so it's going to be a very busy year for us. So that, in, that concludes the brief presentation on Discovery Metals. We are very excited about the prospects of our properties. We're well funded and to to identify targets and first stage drill uh, test all seven of our properties. So it's, it's going to be an exciting year for us. Thank you.